Boys, if summer will play in fall-like conditions tonight at Target Field, where some fans have arrived with jackets in tow, prepared for the Twins' final home series of the season, a duel with the Diamondbacks. Ricky in Alaska will make his second-to-last start of the year for the Twins. He's demonstrated significant improvement this month, progress he'd like to build on tonight. Josh Palmenter will start for Arizona. He owns the third lowest DR in baseball over his last five starts, although he has never beaten an American League opponent. Five, zero for five so far. We welcome you to Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. A late-season interleague matchup tonight for the Twins against an Arizona team that has not come to town in six years, a team that has never played at Target Field. An opportunity for the Twins to even up their interleague uh, record at 10 and 10 for the year. Twins own an 8 and 7 career record all time against the Diamondbacks. While most of the Twins are unfamiliar with Arizona, Ricky Nolasco is not. He's had solid success against the Diamondbacks, an 8 and 2 career mark, while averaging a hair under one strikeout an inning against them. The D-backs, well, they have been crippled by injury. They're also a team that's been bad on the road. They come into tonight's game with a 10-game losing streak outside of Phoenix. They are hungry for a win. For Twins fans, the most recognizable name in the lineup is Mark Trumbull, the former Angel, who missed two months with a stress fracture in his foot, but is coming on strong to close the season. Two teams on a different path in terms of offense clash tonight here at Target Field. Still ahead, Dick and Bert discuss the September surge of power at the plate for the Twins. Twins take aim at Arizona here tonight. Fox Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Ram. Come in and get a great deal during Ram Truck Month going on now. And by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. A spectacular night for baseball at Target Field. The Diamondbacks making their first outdoor visit to Minnesota. 
And the Twins opening up a three game series against their National League counterparts. The Twins leading the overall series eight games to seven. And the first time the Diamondbacks have been here since the Metrodome days. And we welcome you to a beautiful Monday night here at Target Field. Dick Bramer along with Burt Blylevin. The Twins playing their last homestand of the year and playing out the schedule in 2014 with an eye to 2015 and some encouragement with the batting order producing a lot of runs in this homestand. Yeah, so far in six games on this homestand, there are some guys that have been swinging a hot bat. Kurt Suzuki trying to get that average up to 300 throughout the year. Mahler, Santana, we've seen Santana do a great job on that leadoff spot. Brian Dozier starting to get hot again, and that's good to see. Want him to finish the season strong, hitting maybe 250 if he can get hot over the last week. Now the Twins, of course, enjoy the run production that they've had, really going back to the early part of August. But the biggest thing they hope to achieve in 2015 that wasn't there in 2014, an effective starting rotation. And Ricky Nolasco, who was the opening day starter, starting to show some signs of encouragement that he'll be ready to go again next year. Yeah, four of his last five starts have been very good as far as quality starts. He's coming off maybe his best start of the year against the Detroit Tigers. Of course, the Tigers, a very good hitting ball club. Eight shutout innings. Twins ended up winning that ball game late, but Ricky Nolasco, that's the Nolasco the Twins paid a lot of money for, and hopefully he can do that, go into the winter with a positive frame of mind and get ready for next year. Twins are 3-3 three and three on this home stand so far they would like to finish the home schedule on a high note with a series win maybe even a sweep against the Diamondbacks game one coming up when we come back It's a beautiful night, but for a moment, imagine this night from an Arizona perspective. They looked at the schedule when it first came out. So Minnesota, late September, and here they are on an absolutely glorious night. It's Kirk Gibson, and uh, it's been an awful year for the uh, Diamondbacks. Gibson, hoping that his team can 
point of 100 losses. They've not played well, obviously. Menards a batting order for the Diamondbacks. Ender Enciarte leading things off. A.J. Pollock, David Peralta, Mark Trumbo, Miguel Montero, Aaron Hill, Jake Lamb, Chris Owings, and Dini Gregorius. And it'll be Ricky Nolasco on the mound, 31 years old. Now, he has had success against the Arizona Diamondbacks. This is his 13th career start against, of course, Nolasco pitched for the Florida Marlins and the L.A. Dodgers, but he is 8-2 with an ERA just under 4 at 3.96 in his career against the Diamondbacks. In Ciarte will lead things off. He brings a 10-game hitting streak into this series. He's a threat to steal if he gets on base. Alaska will face in Ciarte, Pollock, and Peralta. Squaring the bunt, taking ball one. A lot of youngsters in this Arizona Diamondback lineup in CR. On one of these, just 23 years old from Venezuela in his rookie season. And at the knees. One and one. Diamondbacks coming off a sweep at the hands of the Colorado Rockies at Coors Field. And not close, two and one. Yeah, last time the Twins faced the Arizona Diamondbacks, it was in Arizona back in November, or excuse me, uh, 2011, May of 2011. The Diamondbacks swept the Twins at that time in a three-game series. But last time here in 2008 at the Metrodome, Twins swept the Diamondbacks. Two and two. Last time the Twins faced the Diamondbacks, it was a somber experience for everybody. We were in Arizona um, for the funeral of Harmon Killebrew. Harmon had passed away a couple days before we arrived in Arizona. The funeral was held uh, in the uh, Phoenix area. Three and two now. I'm going to go back to that because it was almost like it was staged because we had that off mm -hmm. day. Yep. He knew we were coming into town. Full count to the leadoff man here in the first. And a pop up foul and out of play. Now, Lasko in his last start, we talked about it in the open eight shutout innings against the Tigers. And, you know, he threw 109 pitches, 70 for strikes. And Kurt Suzuki catching him here tonight. One thing Kurt said is that he enjoyed catching him his last start because he was 70% strikes. And a lot of times you'll see, you know, Nolasco be 50, about 60%. but. Boy, 70 is uh, is huge numbers. Solid single to center for NCRT after a long battle. And Alaska will have to keep an eye on him at first base. Okay, Dave McKay, the former twin, the first base coach for the Diamondbacks. Northland for defense for the Twins. Chris Herman is in left field. Aaron Hicks is in center. And Oswaldo Arcia in right. Bluff, Santana, Bernier, and Parmalee. Infielders, both Brian Dozier and Joe Maurer getting the night off, and Kurt Suzuki behind the plate. Here's AJ Pollock. And a first pitch strike. Now, Diamond back don't they do not run a lot. 79 stolen bases, but they have been caught 30 times. It's a Cardi at first base. He has 16 stolen bases in 19 attempts. He has a comfortable lead. Half swing, they'll appeal. Strike two, says Lance Barksdale. Alaska getting ahead of the right handed batter. He's looking for win number six. It's been an elusive sixth win for Alaska. And his last win coming July 1st. Over his last eight starts since July 6th, he is 0 5 with an ERA over eight. But over his last five starts, ERA just over three. Runner goes on a two hop throw from Suzuki. Had no chance of getting in Ciarte. In Ciarte stealing a base is 17th of the year. And against Nolasco, that's the 15th stolen base against Nolasco in 20 tries. One and two now with the speedy runner in scoring position at second base. Tapper left side backhanded by Santana and no chance to get the runner the runner at second 
in Ciarte holding at second, but an infield hit now for Pollock. Yeah, Pollock, very good speed, getting down that line very quickly and staying out of the out. And Santana, who's a little bit up the middle, has to go to his right, and then you can see he had a little trouble gripping the ball, but Pollock would have beat it out anyway, even a good throw. First and second, nobody out, and here's David Peralta. As the Twins had a feel good story, maybe the feel good story in baseball in April with Chris Colabello, Diamondbacks have had a, a full season of David Peralta pretty much. He used to be a Highly thought of pitching prospect blew out his shoulder. He kind of disappeared for a while, reinvented himself as a position player, and reemerged being signed out of independent baseball. If that sounds familiar, that's kind of what happened with Colabello. And Peralta has been able to stay consistent, keeping his batting average nearly uh, at 300. And he finds himself hitting third for a major league team. 2 0. Oh. I remember the White Sox had a pitcher Bart Johnson that uh, he didn't work out pitching wise so he went down and tried to become a hitter. We had a pitcher with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates uh, Donnie Robinson that was an outstanding hitter that tried going down for a while. 2 and 0 oh, and a ball grounded to second should be a double play. There's one. Low throw and Parmalee deftly backhands it out of the dirt two away. A big double play turn right there behind. Alaska, the 16th double play that he has had turned behind him. Started by Doug Bernier. Yeah, Bernier, you know, he's known as a defensive player. Nice pick right there by Parmel. Bernier, good flip over to Santana, and then the throw low. Parmel picks it on that first top for the double play. Two down. Runner at third now, and here is Mark Trumbo. And a first pitch strike. Trumbo had a hard time breaking into the Angel lineup with all their free agent signings over the years. Albert Pujols, Josh Hamilton. So finally, he found himself in Arizona, and he's been hurt and doesn't put up the numbers that the uh, Diamondbacks had hoped. It's a little breaking ball and a big swing and a miss. Yeah, last year with the Angels, he played in 159 games, hit 34 home runs, drove in 100. But he missed a lot of time this year with a stress fracture in his right foot. From April 24th to July 11th, he was on a disabled list. Immense power, but Nolasco's ahead of him 0 2. And the breaking ball strikes out Trumbo, cleans up the first inning. Diamondbacks don't score, even though they got a couple of hits to start the inning off.
first inning. Ron Gardenhire hoping that his Twins can finish the home schedule on a high note. Winning homestand, maybe a, a sweep of the Diamondbacks here before they finish the season in Detroit with four games of an honors batting order. For the Twins, Danny Santana, the shortstop, leading off, then Chris Herman, Trevor Blue, Kenny Vargas, Oswaldo Arcia, Kurt Suzuki, Chris Parmalee, Aaron Hicks, and Doug Bernier. And for the first time in the Twins' career and his career, he'll be facing that lineup. Josh Cole Minter making his 27th start, his 32nd appearance overall at the start of the season in the bullpen. Because of some injuries, he's now in that rotation. He's pitched very well, especially over his last five starts. All quality starts, an earned run average at 1.01. Santana takes strike one from Josh Cole Minter. Santana out in front of the off speed pitch and it's 0 and 2. And that's what he does. He does a good job at changing speed straight over the top type delivery, not an overpowering fastball. He'll mix in a big slow curveball from time to time, too. And on three pitches, Santana's gone. Good change up down and away. And it is straight over the top. You don't see that type of angle from a pitcher's very often. Yeah, they call it unorthodox, but that's what you want to create as a pitcher, that downward plane, and he's taking it to the next extreme. One oh. down, that'll bring up Chris Herman. The hitters say that ball almost comes out of his ear because he puts that ball way above his head. Strike on the outside corner. Ron Garden and I are talking about that's one of the challenges they're having with Michael Tonkin. Who's taller than Call Mentor, but they want to constantly have to remind Tonkin to stay over the top to create that downward plane that you talk about. One and one to Herman. Call Mentor is uh, six foot four, about 235. Little roller to the right side, easy play for Owings. Two down. And before Trevor Plouffe comes to the plate. Let's show you the Northland Ford defense for the Diamondbacks. In CRT, in left, Pollock in center, Peralta in right. An infield of Lamb, Gregorius, Owings, and Trumbo, and Miguel Montero behind the play. Two down, and Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe returning to the third spot in the batting order. He uh, Hit there regularly when Joe Maurer was on the disabled list. Maurer getting the night off and Bloop back in the number three hole, taking strike one. And if you notice, Brian Dozier also getting the night off. Saw Chris Herman hitting in that two hole. Outside one and one. Fastball strike two. Uh, pitches seven strikes for Call Mentor. Call Mentor, 28 years old, looking for his 11th win. He does have one save on the year. Came up as a starter three years ago in 2011, the last couple years out of the bullpen. But because of the injuries to some of the starters, it's an opportunity to start. Couple of strikeouts and a quick one, two, three first inning.
for the Diamondbacks and the Twins. Doug Bernier gets the start for Minnesota tonight at second base. His first time starting since he was called up in early September with the rest of the September call-ups. So he's been here for three weeks and played in parts of four games. He has a total of five at-bats. So I asked Bernier how he's making the most of this opportunity, even though he's not playing very much. And he said he'll stand in on some batting practice sessions. He'll take some ground balls at different positions, just do some things to shake it up a little bit and also to keep him in a game rhythm, the kind that he had when he played every day in Rochester. He's also 34 years old, so I asked him about his future in baseball, and he said as long as he's healthy and feels like he can do this at a high level, he's just going to keep going. So Dick and Bert, it's kind of a year-to-year -year thing for Doug Bernier, but he said for right now, he is playing next year, and then we'll have to check in with him again after the end of next year. <laughs> Yeah, 13 minor league seasons uh, for uh, Doug Bernier with uh, four different organizations. So he's cherishing these moments. He was up with the Twins a little bit last year, too. 53 at bats, played in 33 games, drove in five runs, two strikes. And Alaska with a quick strike out of Miguel Montero. Again, that big curveball of Alaska. Take a look at it. Good tight break. Montero way out front swings through it. We showed you in the pregame show in the last two starts, and we know it is only two starts, but in Alaska, really good numbers and an opponent batting average of what we have, 271. And it's a fair question for fans to ask why did the Twins sign Ricky Nolasco when he, for the most of the season, has pitched so poorly for whatever reason? Want to know? And a pitch. Called a strike. It was the opponent batting average of 270. In other words, for seven years in the National League, he gave up. He was as stingy in the hit department as he was in his last two starts. And on that basis, the ball fouled away. The Twins felt he was worthy of a four year deal with a lot of money. And then up until now, the last two starts, they haven't seen the pitcher that they signed. Yeah, again, I think four of the last five starts have been really good. It kind of started in Kansas City when he threw seven innings of shutout baseball, allowed only three hits. Up the middle and a base hit. A one out single for Aaron Hill. Yeah, the veteran Aaron Hill in his fourth season with the Diamondbacks, his 10th season overall, six of them coming with the Toronto Blue Jays, former All Star. Next time the Twins open up a series at home, it'll be in the 2015 season. Season tickets are on sale. Prices will remain unchanged. Next year, Twins season ticket holders will receive new benefits, including an enhanced ticket exchange program, convenient access to tickets on their mobile devices, and more. You can find out more by visiting TwinsBaseball.com. Here's Jake Lamb. Lamb, a youngster in his rookie season, only 23 years old. Started the season in Double A, moved up to Triple A. Mobile is their Double A affiliate. Then Reno in Triple A. Hit 327 in 104 games. Called up on August 7th. Alaska six batters faced, three singles allowed. One and zero to Lamb. And now two and zero. Gibson, the manager, his longtime teammate to his left, Alan Trammell. Trammell, the bench coach. Popped up near the Diamondback dugout. And Ploof with room for the play. Two down. And bring up Chris Owens. Trammell had his chance to manage. In Detroit, when the roster was terrible and Trammell didn't have much of a chance to survive with such poor talent in Detroit, he probably wishes he had the talent in Detroit that they have now. <laughs> He'd probably still be managing. Probably a little easier to manage. <laughs> he didn't have any Cabreras or Martinez's or Scherzer's or Verlander's. Here's Chris Owings. It's it's unfair. I think. Always felt this way to judge a manager based on a one loss record when, in retrospect, you look at the dreadful talent on those Tiger teams that Trammell had to manage. He 
great baseball mind. All the things you look for in a manager. Maybe he'll get another shot down the road. Up high, one and one. I think a lot of people are looking at Ron Garden higher too because if it's going to be four seasons of 90 or more losses, but you know you can only manage. You can't go out between the lines and play the game. And sitting to his right, Gene Glenn. Happy 58th birthday to him. Two and one. I've told people now for months that if you really believe that the biggest issue with the Twins the last four years is that the roster has been mismanaged then you're entitled to your opinion I'll go to my grave disagreeing with you but well, we hope that doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs> two and one to Chris Owings yeah, Chris Owings another youngster 23 years old Diamondbacks number one pick in 2009. Gilbert High School in Gilbert, South Carolina. Came up last year a little bit with them. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. Owings missed time on a disabled list this year from June 29th to September 2nd, just activated on the 2nd of September. Had some left shoulder issues. Two and two. And another strikeout on a breaking ball to end the inning. Another meaningless single for the Diamondbacks. No score after an inning and a half. Photo using hashtag North Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by ATT. It's September 22nd, and a week from now the twin season will be done. But it is September 22nd. Does that date ring a bell for you? It, it did when you reminded me earlier. Yeah. 1977 against the then called, I believe it was California Angels back then. With the Texas Rangers and uh, pitched a no hitter. Did you tell me once you had family members present for oh, that game? Oh, my mom and dad were there. there. Family was there. One strike to Kenny Vargas. Yeah, it was in Anaheim. It was cool. Arcia and Suzuki will follow. Vargas takes an off speed pitch for strike two. What do you, who did you retire for the final out of your no hitter? Matt Bosley. I struck him out. And reacted how because the game I'm guessing wasn't on TV or have you ever seen any video footage of it? I, I got like three innings of it on radio with uh, Dick Emberg and Don Drysdale. Oh. That was it the last three innings. Did Dick Emberg give you an oh my? I don't remember. How's he getting away with this that type of oh my? <laughs> 
running diving catch in center for A.J. Pollock. Vargas put a lot of air underneath it. And Pollock got there for the first out of the second. Yeah, very nice catch. Nice reaction by Pollock. Some speed in the outfield for the Diamondbacks. And Pollock, you can look at his eyes. Look at the concentration and diving to make that catch. Very nice catch. And the ball staying in the glove. Diamondbacks will shift for Arcia. Lamb will play where normal second baseman might play. Let's take a look at the Mall of America report. Uh, reliever turned starter because of some of the injuries to the starting rotation. And five straight quality starts for Cole Minter. And he is from Homer, Michigan. Homer, Michigan. That's not good for a pitcher. <laughs> Now, I know when you know we do the circle me bird people will hold up signs and there's they're saying from wherever you right know, and you look at your map well I looked at the map where is Homer Michigan I'm guessing it's, it's up in the upper peninsula no no it's between Ann Arbor and Kalamazoo off of highway 94 okay All near right. Battle Creek and and Marshall okay yep. two down that'll bring up Kurt Suzuki Right off 94, not too far south. Well, I suppose it's it's possible that Cole Mentor could go eight innings at some point and qualify for a win, and then from Homer, Michigan, and then the Grant Balfour might save it for him, and that's not the best last name for a pitcher either. Ball four. No, it's not. Here's Suzuki. Boy, no uh, mystique for Cole Mentor. He just gets ahead of. I think every hitter so far strike one. Yeah, they're talking to the Diamond Pack folks. Uh, you know, they're very, very impressed with this young man right here. He's kind of taken the, the bull by the horn and uh, worked in that starting rotation very nicely. Throws strikes, 38 walks and 167 innings pitched. One and one to Suzuki. Twins looking for the first base runner. Yeah, only two, two batters have faced Cole Enter before, and that being one Kurt Suzuki is 0 for 4 against him. The other one, Jordan Schaefer, and he's not playing tonight. One and two. Suzuki's average at 291. Side turns them away, two and two. I think uh, you know you mentioned it before, Dick. What's impressive about Suzuki's this year? Only 44 strikeouts and 436 mm -hmm. at bats. Makes contact usually. And now three and two, Parmalee on deck. This game bears uh, nothing. So it has no bearing on the. Uh, Pennant races, but some games tonight that do. Three and two to Suzuki. Pulled foul. You know, these are games as a former player. I wanted to be in. I don't care. The schedule is 162 ball games, not 154. You play them all out. And this is a time that I felt stronger because you're looking forward to the season end and you want to get through this season as quick as possible. But then you also realize what you have to do to make yourself better for next year. Another 3 2 pitch to the Twins catcher. Punch down the right field line, but a foul ball. And into the seats. Well, maybe not a coincidence then that you threw your no hitter late in the season. The Ranger team that you were on, as memory serves, you weren't in contention the last week of the season, were you? Oh, and I, I was actually just had come off the disabled as I. Pulled my uh, groin muscle and uh, actually I re pulled it in the eighth inning and threw nothing but curveballs in the ninth inning because uh, it didn't, I could shorten my stride a little bit. I ended up pitching a no hitter. And there's other games I pitch better. High fly center field going back is Pollock. Under it now. A couple of one, two, three innings for Callmender when we come back. And it helped too that the lights were out. Andrew Wiggins of the Timberwolves will join Marty Gellner.
field. And for the second time in just a couple of weeks, a Timberwolves rookie is here and threw out the first pitch. Andrew Wiggins did that here tonight. I heard you didn't play any baseball when you were a kid, but that was a pretty darn good pitch. Dang, I got a good warm up in before I threw it, so. That's the key. Yeah, it was the key. You were the number one overall pick in this last summer's NBA draft by Cleveland. Kind of spent about a month maybe on your own before the trade here to Minnesota. How much love and uh, how much do you feel wanted by the Timberwolves fans and the Wolves since coming here? Oh, I feel a lot of love, you know, since, since I stepped off the plane, you know, whatever I do, uh, they're supporting me, you know, and I'm just, I'm just loving the love. I can tell there were an entourage, not that you brought with you, but photographers and writers and people that just are following what you're doing. Uh, training camp opens in about a week for the Wolves. What is it that you're most excited about when this group all gets together? Uh, you were going to catch that foul ball, too, aren't I'll you? get more of the way. <laughs> but um, I'm really excited to, to be playing with all the players. You know, I haven't got a chance to really play and get to know all the players yet. Uh, that's what I'm most looking forward to, and just really spending time with the team, you know, get prepared for the season. And you told me that you haven't barely been to many baseball games, and you got some pretty good seats here. Yeah. What do you think when you sit and watch this game here tonight? How fast they're throwing. <laughs> How fast they're throwing? Yeah, I, I feel like it, it seems a lot faster in person. And maybe just a couple of ticks faster than your first pitch tonight? Uh, just a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> Andrew, thanks for joining us. Have a great season. Thank you. Dick and Bert, Andrew Wiggins, number one overall pick, Timberwolves rookie. Uh, thank you, Marnie. You know what? That Oh, Bob Brindley missed that. And he was a catcher. And he was a catcher. I think he had got his hands on what it, too. What happened? But he was ready. He was down yeah. there just a little bit out of his reach. He got flesh on it. Or, yes, he or did. Flesh. He got, he got those big paws on it. <laughs> down the left field line, and that will be a foul ball. Oh, we wish you know, the Timberwolves and yeah. Wiggins all the best. In the I world. mean, you look at Andrew Wiggins, how young, 19 years old. My goodness. That's you were no, that, you, you got called up to the big leagues well, at that yeah, age. I, so. I don't remember being that young. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's awesome to be able to play professional sports like he's going to play. I mean, great season at Kansas and then becomes the number one pick overall. And the, uh, I think the Timberwolves going to. Hopefully, can find a great young player right there. Punch to right field. RC comes in a couple steps, makes a catch one away. Hey, what? Nolasco's doing a good job of working in that breaking ball. Even that right there. That's a good spot for that pitch. You know, for most of the season, you commented about how he was falling off so violently, violently, and sometimes even all the way off the mound in his follow through. And while he still follows through I think it's much more in line with what you recommend where your right leg if you're a right handed pitcher swings over but he stays on the mound. Yeah that uh, he's keeping that left hip in a lot better. And then opening it up you see where his chest is now it's almost going where towards Suzuki to where it was kind of going toward the first baseline. But that all comes with you know if your arms bothering you try to compensate a little bit. He had that elbow issue that put him on a disabled list and I think we have to give him benefit of the doubt after the last five starts four of them have been quality starts that this is a Ricky in Alaska that twin saw and went out and wanted to get two and one to Ender in Ciarte. single stole a base got as far as third base. I think we're saying that from up here because we just hope and pray that it's an Alaska that that you know the twins thought they were getting. Because they have three more years on his contract, and they, they need him to be along with Phil Hughes and hopefully Kyle Gibson, whether it be Trevor May or Mike Pelfrey, whoever those starters are going to be next year. Tommy Malone. There's a group of other guys that are coming up that might have opportunities, like Meyer. Roll to first over the bag. Nice pickup by Parmalee, but nobody's on the bag. Lasco needed to be there Parmalee with a nice pickup but it goes as a base hit anyway. Yeah mistake by the pitcher right there your responsibility to get over there and cover the bag. And you can't blame anybody but yourself. I've done the same thing. You feel like there's a hole out there and you want to just bury your head in it because you know you made a mistake. And it's he already has his second base hit. Pollock with a single his first time up. 
regarding Malone. I talked with Tommy today. He had a bullpen session. Everything felt great, and the hope is that he will pitch out of the bullpen in the Detroit series. Will not make a start. You know, I, I, I remember not covering first base, I believe. Rich Reese or Harmon were playing first. It was a play like that. I didn't get over there. When I came in, Marv Grissom, my pitching coach, took me in the tunnel and just let me have it. How old, earful. How old were you at About the time? 19 or 20. Okay. Yeah. yeah, those are the little things that sometimes can lose your ball game if you don't do those little things as a pitcher. There's only so many things after you let that ball go, you have to become a middle infielder. So it's a mistake, and hopefully, you can get a ground ball right here. This defense can pick him up. Breaking ball, missing inside, ball one. Pollock, 26 years old, Arizona Diamondbacks number one pick in 2017, 17th pick overall. Out of Notre Dame University. Runner goes and a pitch hit to center field. Hicks coming in. Out number two. That'll bring up Peralta. Take advantage of the Fox Sports North Minnesota Wild Fan Pack ticket offer during the September 27th and 29th preseason home games for the Wild. Starting at 60 bucks, you'll get two upper level tickets to the game, two hot dogs, and two sodas. For details, visit foxsportsnorth.com. Click on upcoming events on the hot topics bar. Here's Peralta bounced into a big double play started by Doug Bernier in the first inning. Strike on the outside corner. Home plate umpire Gary Cedarstrom, who uh, the last time he had the plate here it was the 2014 All Star game. Why not been a North Dakota native? Rest of the umpiring crew Lance Barksdale, John Byrne, and Mark Ripperger. One strike. And Peralta drills one. Foul. Yeah, Lance Barksdale. <laughs> it took him a while. He knew what he wanted to call, but he had to kind of control himself to get his feet underneath him before he could make the call. The ball was right at his feet. Marksdale, an 11 year Major League veteran. 0 oh 2. Velasco's ended the first and second innings with swinging strikeouts with his breaking ball, but those were to right handed batters. It's another swinging strikeout, this time from a left handed man.
Fox Sports North is brought to you by Century Link, your link to what's next. Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. A gorgeous night for baseball. We're very glad you're with us wherever you might be in Twins territory. I know for a fact that Twins territory extends to over in the uh, United Kingdom. Ian Cheatham is a big Twins fan over in uh, England and uh, he's watching tonight. So we want to pass along our thanks to Twins viewers wherever you might be around the globe. Yes we do. One strike to Chris Parmley. He'll be followed by Aaron Hicks and Doug Bernier. in a right field and that'll die in front of Peralta for a base hit first twins hit and all it cost Parmley was a bat and that'll bring up Aaron Hicks carsoup.com trivia question you know, is it diamondback related twin related Looks like it's more diamond could be Kirk Gibson related who are the four managers to lead the diamondbacks the postseason play we saw one of them just miss a foul ball. <laughs> we'll ponder that. And we'll uh, we'll get back to you. Aaron Hicks down and away ball one. Hicks tardy and showing up at the ballpark yesterday. Missed the game before because of a stiff back. Back in the lineup tonight. Twins have had a lot of patience with Aaron Hicks, to say the least. There's a strike, one and one. He's finally getting a base runner, forcing Colmenter to pitch from the stretch. Twins have seen a better approach at the plate from Hicks. What they have not seen is the extra base power that they expect him to grow into. Yeah, between Double A AA and Triple A this year, he had only five home runs. He's hit only one home run here. That came back in April when the Twins were in Tampa. Three and one. Home enters loud 18 home runs. Eight of them to left handed hitters, 10 to righties. Hicks on the season up here now. 34 hits, seven doubles, and one home run. Foul back. He has a couple of walk off hits, including one here the other night. Yeah, the home run that. Uh, I remember him hitting off a heat bell in Tampa. A three run home run. He's raised his batting average a little bit in September. Full count. No speed to work with at first base. Hicks strikeout prone. We wouldn't expect Parmley to go any place, and he doesn't. And Hicks takes ball four. And that's one thing he has brought with him a very good eye at the plate. Start of a good inning for the Twins, and we'll see what Bernier is asked to do. I think I know what he's going to be asked to do. Even though Ron Gardenhire doesn't particularly like bunting early in a ball game, he might be asked to do that here. Diamondbacks playing their third baseman Lamb in on the grass, and Trumbo similarly looks like he's going to play in. Yeah, Doug, one of those players like a Jamie Carroll. He's a good student of the game. See Lamb playing in on the grass, anticipating the bunt. And Bernier, all those years in the minor league, being asked to bunt, uh, the lesson uh, he learned very early on. Just like you need a good pitch to hit, you need a good pitch to bunt. And he's just taken ball one. So many hitters, and we've twins 
bunters have probably been more guilty of it than anybody else. He'd like to bunt it toward Lamb if he can. Looked like he was yep. ready to swing away there, 2 0. Oh. But we see so many people in the batter's box, they, they stand in there and their assignment is to bunt, and they bunt at the pitch regardless of where it is. Whether it's a ball or a strike, whether it's reachable or not. 2 0. Oh. Now, fastball taken for a strike. And he not, did not show butt there either. Of course, a lot of minor league at bats. For Bernier, over 13 seasons with the Rockies, the Yankees, the Pirates, and the Twins. Had a good year in Rochester, hit 280 in 124 games. Bunt foul, two and two. Bernier beating himself up over a jab to bunt attempt. Two and two. Tom Kelly in the pregame was talking about situations like this that this even though these games don't mean anything in the standings they also mean a lot to the player on evaluation from you know Terry Ryan to the coaching staff to Ron Gardner and everybody that's watching two and two. Popped up. Chased by Trumbo. And caught <laughs> nice by the guy in the red shirt. <laughs> yeah, Trumbo couldn't get there in time, but the gentleman in the red shirt had his glove. Well, have some more baseballs, my goodness. <laughs> Watch Trumbo go over. Now this ball is probably five feet into the stands, and you see the gentleman right there get a nice catch. Two and two. Foul oh, back again. Bernier hitting ninth, getting a chance to start tonight in place of Brian Dozier. Expect Dozier to be back in the lineup tomorrow. Expect Maurer to be back in the lineup tomorrow. Both might play yet tonight. Two and two. Inside now, three and two. Palmenter so sharp with his control, and as soon as Parmley got his broken bat base hit, his control has wavered a little bit. He walked Hicks on five pitches. Yeah, Montero, the catcher, is going to go out to talk to him about this pitch. Bernier, a right handed hitter that pretty much stands right on top of home plate. Quick trip to the mound by Montero. Santana on deck. Full count. And Bernier swings through a pitch that looked like ball four. That's a changeup right there. Good pitch. Now with one out, two on for Danny Santana. Our Coors like cold hard fact. It's 1961 when they became the Twins. Danny Santana right behind Tony Oliva and his Rookie of the Year batting championship batting average of 3.23 and 64. He said safely in 19 of his last 20 games. Struck out on three pitches to start the ball game for the Twins. Swing and a miss. I believe two of the three pitches thrown to Santana in that first inning were, was that changeup. That's what the home enter started him off with right there a changeup. Short center. Pollock with the catch. That's the second out. Bring up Chris Herman. So the twin now in jeopardy paying the price for Bernier's inability to bunt. And it'll be left. 
back to Chris Herman with two outs. Chris Herman picked up a couple doubles yesterday. Which could use one of those here. His first two extra bases, base hits for Chris. Yesterday's ball game. Herman with a bouncer to second his first time up. Not a lot of at bats. 58 at bats for Herman. 11 hits. Herman almost went oppo. Hitting a home run, a near home run to the bullpen in left center at the very top of the wall in left center field. Checked his swing and took ball one. One and oh to Chris Herman. To right field. Down for a hit. Parmalee being waved around. Peralta's throw to the backstop, and everybody moves up. Herman not only delivers, but then a mistake by Peralta allows two runners to move into scoring position. Peralta just airmailing the catcher, Montero. And that allows Herman to go from first to second. Right off the end of the bat, hit softly in front of Peralta. He comes charging in. His idea is to keep the ball down, but watch out. And the pitcher back there to back up. I've never wanted to be an official scorer, but I've always thought there ought to be an error charged on a play like that. When you not only don't hit the cutoff, man, you don't hit the catcher, allowing everybody to move up. A terrible. Errant throw and there's no error charge. Instead, the runners go on the throw. But now if Plouffe can deliver, the Twins might have a crooked number here in the third. Up and away, ball one. I think Hicks would have went to third anyway. He got a pretty good jump, it, but it's Herman that got that extra base. And what that does, it you know, tough play in the hole. It's not a force out at second anymore. Now you have to make the throw over to first. He buries a fastball on the outside corner. Trevor Plouffe leading the club and runs batted in with 79. A decent final week. He could end up with 85 runs batted in. Can pick up a couple here. Goes after a high fastball swing and a miss one and two. Because of that 75, 76 mile an hour changeup, that fastball clocked about 87, 88. It looks like about 93. Late now two and two. You see the velocity at 87. Move almost certainly will win the team ERA title. See if we can get a couple more here with a two out hit. Take one, uh, took one right down the middle. On the inner half. And Blue strikes out leaving two in scoring position. The Twins get one on a couple of flared hits and a walk.
in Alaska accomplishing what uh, far too few twin starting pitchers have accomplished over the last four years. That is put a few zeros up early and wouldn't you know it now the twins in the bottom of the third scorer run and the whole complexion of this game uh, swings. Outside ball one. Trumbo Montero and Hill to face him in the fourth. Uh, Trumbo a strikeout victim ending the first inning on that big slow curveball. Chomp foul earlier today. The Royals got a run in the bottom of the 10th. The problem is they needed two. So they lost the completion of the suspended game in Kansas City, finishing it in Cleveland. But the Royals are leading 2 0 in the sixth inning of the scheduled game. You can see the standings after the completion of the suspended game. There's a pitch taken down and in 2 and 1. Beyond that, the White Sox are shutting out the Tigers at Comerica Park. Two to nothing in the eighth inning. And Toronto thumping Seattle 11 to 2. A lot of interesting games being played tonight. That's hit well to the left field corner. And that is a foul ball. Boy, not a lot of room in that corner. About what? Three, four feet. Yeah. And that ball just had enough hook on it to go foul. It's fair, it's fair, it's fair, it's fair. I'm telling you, it's fair. Wow. Well, it's foul. Trumbo comes back with another 2 2 pitch coming. Fifty two pitches thirty four strikes. Fastball foul back. Alaska will make a start in Detroit. His turn came up yesterday, but he said he felt he needed an extra day, and so he's starting tonight instead. Off the plate with a 92 mile per hour fastball. No walk so far, but he has given up four singles. Scattered over three innings. Came inside with a fastball and got a strikeout. Most of the if not all of the other strikeouts have been on the curveball, that one on a sinking fastball. Yeah, they had some good movement on that pitch. Down and in. And Trumbull striking out for the second time. See the number seven on the Fox track? Nowhere near the target, but an effective pitch nonetheless. Strikeout number five. Miguel Montero struck out his first time up. So they're late in the game in Kansas City, late in the game in Detroit, and if the scores hold up, it's going to be really interesting because the Royals, who looked like they were slipping back behind the Tigers, would only be a game back with six games to play. That's golf foul, one and one. Montero, one of the veterans for Gibson in his ninth season with the Diamondbacks, a two time All Star. Two strikes and a ball to Miguel Montero. Go throwing a few more fastballs now here the second time through the order. Yeah, again, good numbers for Nolasco against the Diamondbacks. 13th career start, 8 and 2, ERA at 3.96. Last year, four starts with the Marlins and the Dodgers against the Diamondbacks. He is 3 and 0. This time, Nolasco heads to the bag. Parmalee will, however, make the play himself. Two down. 
before Aaron Hill comes to the plate as this season winds down. It's never too early to start thinking about traveling to sunny Fort Myers. Yes. You'll be doing that uh, Sunday night. Yes, I will. And join the Twins on the official spring training fan experience. One stop shopping for game tickets, hotel accommodations, as well as exclusive pregame meet and greets with players, front office staff, and other personalities. Learn more and be ready to book as soon as the spring training schedule comes out. You can call 612 276 3824 or visit twinsbaseball.com. Lance Marksdale says no swing. Yeah, Aaron Hill up. He got a base hit in his first at bat, base hit up the middle. But if you love baseball and you want to get to know the players or meet the players a little bit easier than it is sometimes during a, a major league game during the season, spring training is the best place to do it. Is it? Players go from field to field. And what I've told people is don't be deterred because of the, the games in Bradenton that day because the Twins still invite fans to come and look at the, you know, watch the workouts. There's a ball spinning up the line. The Lasco will make the play himself. One unassisted. And the Lasco's first one, two, three inning. Stay tuned for this important message from Mesh Besher and Spence. Four effective innings, four shutout innings. Twins announced today that Kenny Vargas, who's played the last two months at the big league club, and Jose Barrios won two big awards today. Yeah, Barrios starting down in single A, moved up to triple A, actually pitched the ball game in triple A this year, double A, triple A. So all three minor league brackets, 12 and 7 combined. And congratulations to both those players. Vargas will lead things on. Yeah, Barrios called up to pitch a big late. Season game for the Rochester Red Wings. It didn't go very well for him, but gives you some idea how highly he is thought of in the Twins organization. It was, in essence, a playoff game for Rochester. They needed to win to get in, and they had Barrios start it because they felt they gave him, uh, he gave them their best chance to win. What a note of Vargas. He pitched here along with Vargas in the uh, Futures mm -hmm. game. He started for me in that ball game. What'd you think? He's got good stuff. He reminds me a little bit of Pedro Martinez. Not a big guy. Kind of a maybe I'm going to guess he's 5'10, 5'11, maybe six at the tall. At the tallest. And he's got tremendous push off of that rubber. Very good fastball. And Vargas is hitting the hand by a pitch. He'll go to first. And Vargas will go to first, leading off the fourth inning. Yeah, the ball up and in, and Vargas almost looked like he was going to check swing. We'll see which hand it hit. Ooh, almost looked like the knob of the bat. I'm saying the right hand. Showing it to uh, Paul Molitor. Gary Cedarstrom hearing it from Kirk Gibson in the uh, Arizona Diamondback.
Here is Arcia. Even with a runner on first, the Diamondbacks will employ a shift. Although this time, swing and a miss. This time, Gregorius, the shortstop, has moved over to the first base side of second base. Arcia went back. He wanted, I think, some pine tar or something. His hand kind of slipped. Gary Cedarstrom said no. Good. To stay here. <laughs> Good. Speed up the game. That's part of speeding up the game. Baseball uh, formed a committee today to study, uh, study pace of game. And uh, you're to go to home plate with proper equipment. And uh, the only way you can leave the batter's box, go to the on deck circle, is if your bat's uh, broken. And the only way you're going to speed up the game is the umpires have to take charge. Yep. That's the only way. Exactly what Cedarstrom did right there. Two strikes to Arcia. You know, for one year, and I'm thinking it was a couple, two, three years ago, a batter couldn't step out of the batter's box and kind of, you know, do whatever they do to get ready. Remember, the hitters had to stay in the box. And that kind of sped up the game a little bit. It's hit to center and hit pretty well. Pollock going back, still going back, and making a running catch on the warning track. Vargas will get back to first base. Arcia hit it about 410 feet from home plate for the first out of the inning. Again, good speed in that outfield for the Diamondbacks. Set your compass due north Thursday nights on Fox Sports North. Bill Shirt, Laura Shera take a look at the stories and adventures of outdoor enthusiasts in the upper Midwest. Due north outdoors Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Different start time because we'll be in Detroit bringing you Twins baseball and it's only on Fox Sports North. Here's Kurt Suzuki. You know, on the uh, subject of speeding things up and Twins roster has players who do it too. Now Suzuki swung the bat and to me he should he should have the freedom to get out of the box briefly and collect himself and come back in. What what bothers me is hitters will take a strike or a ball and then step out of the box. Unless you've done something, you should not be given a free pass to step out of the batter's box. You swing and miss? Okay. There's another one lifted to the outfield, left center field, and an easier play for Pollock. Out number two. Does, well, that, make, does I, that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but you're talking about somebody's livelihood. You know, they get an adjustment. Remember Mike Harper, who would rain the leg. Right. He would rain the leg. I mean, he would get out every time and adjust his helmet, everything was. But if you it's haven't done, if you haven't done anything, what do you what do you need to adjust? Well, some guys, you know, they readjust their glove because they want them good and tight. Maybe even on a check swing it might loosen up. I don't know. I I was never a hitter, so <laughs> I was a swinger. Here's Parmalee. You up? Uh, you stood I mean, the what batter's you're right now. Parmalee shouldn't no. step out. Right. He, He's, stay he didn't do anything. Right. I mean, and, and most hitters do that. There's well, no reason to adjust something if nothing's moved. <laughs> Are you going to save five minutes? <laughs> I'm, baseball to me needs to target a sub three-hour game. You need to, you know, it's, it's not a game run by the clock, and we all appreciate that. No, I know what you're saying, Dick. It's hard today because starters only go five or six innings, and then you bring in, like, Terry Francona. Uh, he, how many, right. I mean, he averaged, what, six relievers in that each game in that three game series? So that's going to take, you know, for time for the reliever to come in, throw those eight pitches. I think games, you know, work quicker when. Guys went nine innings. Well, oh. believe it or not. One and two. Parmalee's leadoff single in the third led to the only run of the game so far. He takes up high Montero with a look toward first. And there wasn't two minute breaks in right. between. Uh, Absolutely. I remember back in the 70s, I mean, a hot day at the old net, I could pitch and I'd go out there and maybe throw three pitches, and the umpire would say, okay, you ready? Let's go. As long as your outfield, my outfielders are out there ready to run. Uh, you know, if they were ready, <laughs> let's go. And we played games in about, I'm going to guess, two, two hours, 15 minutes, two and a half. 
Harmony loops one caught by Gregorius and that will end the bottom of the fourth inning. One nothing twins as we head to the fifth. Minnesota Lottery Winner's Circle, and we have $100 worth of scratch-off tickets for Pam from Apple Valley, who is celebrating her 40th birthday tonight in the final week of Twins Baseball, also the last day of summer, her first day in her 40s. I've heard 40s the new 30. I mean, that, that's, that's got to be a good say. time. That's what they say. But the lottery tickets are going to make it a lot more bearable. Don't they? Your husband said you've been pretty much promoting this birthday for the last two weeks. I have. I have. It's a big one. You know, it's, it, you, have to, you have to do it. And you choose to celebrate at Target Field. Exactly. Where else would I rather be? Well, we hope 40 is great for you. Bert will be 41 in That's 196 right. yeah. days. Yes, 196 days. I will be, okay, 64. But uh, today is a big day. My sister Trudy's 60th birthday. Okay. So I talked to her. Happy birthday. My grandson Dylan, he is 11 years old today. And I mentioned earlier, uh, Gene Glenn, mm -hmm. his 58th birthday. A lot of good birthdays today. Tommy Lasorda's birthday today. He's 105. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> one uh, and one, the count to Jake Lamb. Nolasco's been good. He's scattered four singles. And Lamb swings and misses one and two. I did some quick figuring, quick by my standards. Uh, and the, we all know the game has changed in so many ways, but 1965 World Series Twins and Dodgers won seven games all but one of the games was an eight and a half inning game because the home team won one and two Breaking ball missing the average length of game In the seven games Was less than two hours and 20 minutes But then you could go back and I looked at when Babe Ruth pitched for the Boston Red Sox. They played in the World Series. Every game was like an hour and a half. Breaking ball off the plate three and two. And no one will never get back to games played that quickly. Right. But I do think baseball is going to try to do something to tell its fan base and particularly the newer fans, younger fans, look, our average time's less than three hours. It'll take a, a while to get there. Here's a sharp single to right leading off the fifth inning for Jake Lamb. And Alaska left the ball right there and the Lamb put a good swing on it. A line drive base hit. So at Fenway Park the average length of game is three hours and 20 minutes. Same to Tropicana Field. Angel Stadium the three longest even average over, times even over the Yankees. I would think that the mm -hmm. Yankees would be the longest I guess only when they play Boston <laughs> Here's Chris Owings 
and there's strike one. Now Owings with one foot out of the batter's box to look at right. the third base coach. That's perfectly fine. Yes. I, I don't think anybody has any and, issue with that. And that's the way it was a couple years ago. Just like that. Stay around the batter's box. Target is inside. Missing inside. And so now Owings, who didn't do a thing, is going to adjust the batting gloves. And safe co field. But look at that. That's the shortest. There's one ballpark that plays less than three hour games. Drilled to left. Owings has a hit. And it comes on the heels of Lamb's single and a pair of base hits to start the fifth inning for the Diamondbacks. Well, this is kind of the way the game started with a couple base hits, but then Nolasco able to get a double play ball. Hopefully he can do that here. Six hits for the Diamondbacks, all of them singles. Gregorius, the number nine batter, lined out to Arcia his first time up. Twins were in this situation, and their number nine batter, Doug Bernier, did not get a bunt down. Ploof in on the grass already. Parmalee playing in front of the runner at first. There's a bunt back and foul. Gregorius has two sacrifices on the year. Young man, 24 years old, from the Netherlands. Came over from the Reds organization. Called up on June 3rd from AAA Reno. One strike to Gregorius. Very uh, slick fielding shortstop. They just have not been able to get him to be able to hit. That sounds familiar to Twins fans. Picture Pedro Floromo. Yeah, good minor league numbers this year down in AAA. Hit 310 in 57 ball games, seven minor league seasons, a 277 hitter. One and one. Pulled down the line, and a fair ball into the corner. Lamb will score the tying run. Owings to third, he'll be held. And the inning starts with three hits from the bottom three hitters in the Diamondback batting order. Yeah, quick uh, wrist right there by Gregorius opening up quickly and lining it down in that right field corner. He picks up an RBI, his 25th of the year on his seventh double. Take a look where this pitch is. Kind of came back over the plate. Suzuki wanted it inside and the ball fair about two or three feet. One well, of the things on balls like that they've tried to preach to Arcia is a ball like that's a double. Don't turn it into a triple. Corner infielders up middle infielders back. On one hop and a run will score Dozier getting the out at first. Yeah, Owens kind of hesitated a little bit at third base, but because Bernier was playing a deep second, he ended up scoring the second run. Well, the Twins might bring the infield in with a runner at third and one down. A.J. Pollock, the batter. And on the play, Gregorius moves over to third. Pollock with a single in the first. It was an infield hit. And then a fly ball to center. And that kicks away from Suzuki, and a run will score. Breaking pitch. And Suzuki did what he could with, but he looked like he kicked off a shin guard and went into the Twins' dugout. A wild pitch scoring the third run of the inning. Yeah, fourth. Fifth wild pitch of the year. You see where that ball landed. Suzuki tried to get in front of it and it ricocheted off of him into the camera well. Or, excuse me, the dugout. Another breaking ball down and away. 2 0. Oh. Three hits from the seven, eight, and nine batters lead to three runs. And 
Pass ball down the middle. Check swing foul. And really, these are the innings that for the last five, and I'm excluding that game in Baltimore where Nolasco gave up eight runs in five plus innings. He has been a stayed away from. He's done a good job of damage control, staying away from that multi run inning, but not here in the fifth inning. Three runs put on by the D backs. Breaking ball. Missing down and away, full count. David Peralta on deck. Seven hits for the Diamondbacks, three of them here in the fifth inning. And another base hit, a sharp single up the middle. Pollock getting his second hit of the ball game. The 2015 regular season schedule is out. Not too early to start thinking about games. You want to attend a target field next year the home opening series April 13th 15th and 16th against the Royals 20 interleague games next season including a home weekend series against the Brewers June 5th through the 7th and you can find out more about the 2015 schedule at twinsbaseball.com when we open up March 31st this this yep. year yep and fully a week later April sometime in April when is it April 6th 196 days away. Diamondbacks and the Dodgers they opened up in Sydney Australia this year back on March 22nd and 3rd two game series. I wonder if baseball is going to continue to do that maybe other mm -hmm. couple years. Been to Japan I know three four times. Keep imagining. You know the twins being invited to play overseas in a. In a uh, place that would be natural to, uh, to or, or native to Minnesota. So I'm figuring if we ever go to Norway <laughs> to play baseball in a big well, league I, game. I know in Holland and in, in Rotterdam they are building a bigger stadium. Okay. Hope, in the hopes of one day Major League Baseball would look at maybe coming over there and playing a couple of games. That'd be good. One strike. It's through the uh, Dutch Federation and the government there in Holland. And they like to baseball likes to have some sort of a hook involved with the two teams. Now if it's the Yankees of course everybody around the world knows the Yankees but it may be that uh, you would be the hook. I don't know about that. I mean, Captain that hook I'm, yourself. Does that mean that I have to put a uniform on and play? no no but they might bring Darn back. I mean you're, you're the only uh, Dutch native in the baseball Hall of Fame. You might be th the reason that the twins are asked to play overseas. Runner goes and Suzuki's throw in time despite well, good. Peralta. I think he's going to be called out because Suzuki yep. made contact with Peralta who leaned over the plate area. So they're going to send the runner Pollock back to first base. Okay. And they're ruling batters interference. Watch Peralta on his follow through. And you can see Suzuki with his follow through. He made contact with him, and that's kind of what you want to do is just make contact, even though, you know, Peralta, watch him. I think he might have hit his bat. Ouch. So the runner returns to first. It's a. Now was that strike three or is that put out two? Put out two. So you can see Suzuki still. Yep, put out two. Or the interference. But that was not strike three, I guess, is, is the question. No, it was not. No. Okay. Trumbo with a couple of strike threes. And now the runner goes again, and Suzuki with a one hop throw, and it's not in time this time, and Trumbo stayed in the batter's box. That's yeah. probably a good move by the Diamondbacks. Yeah. You can see Suzuki flexing his fingers, and his hand still hasn't. Return to normal, and so you steal in the next opportunity. Well, Pollock, uh, good speed anyway. That's his 13 stolen base and 15 attempts. And the short hop right there by the time Bernier could put the tag down, Pollock steals second. 
second stolen base for the Diamondbacks here tonight off of Nolasco. 1 and 0 oh to Trumbo. High fly to deep right center field. This ball's hit a long way and it is gone a home run. And now it's a five run inning against Nolasco in the fifth. That ball looked like it was right there and with the power of Trombo hitting his 12th home run. A two run home run. Five hits five runs. First extra base hit. In the nine hits they've been able to get off of Nolasco and this is a big one. Trombo again 34 home runs last year. The Angels. Up and away ball one to Montero. Two and zero. Oh. Lasco was going along fine through four, but an awful inning for him here in the fifth. The Diamondbacks had high hopes not only for Trombo, he missed some time with that uh, bad foot, but also they uh, they had Paul Goldsmith, Schmidt, and uh, you know he fractured his left hand. Those two guys in a the lineup, there were kind of high hopes for the Diamondbacks to be in the race this year. They were 81 and 81 last year, and then from the very beginning of the season, kind of what happened to the Twins four years ago happened to the Diamondbacks. Injuries, everything kind of. Went Kaflui. The team didn't play well. They have a, uh, you know, a kind of a problem the Twins had. They're starting a lot of the starters mm -hmm. just not pitched real well. But there's a Goldschmidt right there. What he was doing at the time when he went on a disabled list. Two and two to Montero. And now missing inside a full count. Bronson Arroyo. Who has always been healthy with the Reds? He comes over. He has a Tommy John surgery. Patrick Corbin, another pitcher, Tommy John surgery. A lot of Tommy John surgeries. Full count. And another foul. Two guys in their bullpen: David Hernandez and Matt Reynolds. Both of them out with Tommy John surgeries. Daniel Hudson just came back. They just shut him, shut him down, but he just came back from the Tommy John surgery. So a lot of the big starters they're looking to, to compete with are down with the TJ surgery. And another pitch thrown by Nolasco. Count up to 93. Still hasn't completed his fifth inning. 30 pitches so far this inning. There's their pitching problems right there. Royo had never been hurt. He was okay. Mr. Durability. Right. Tommy John needs what you say? He needs some type of commission or royalty yeah. on that. The real hero of it all, of course, was Sally John, who had to take care of Tommy <laughs> during the rehabilitation. Should have named the surgery after her. Now a long at bat and a walk to Montero, and that's going to be the end of the night for Ricky Nolasco. Hoping that uh, we would have more of what we had the last two innings, or uh, last two starts for Nolasco, but a disastrous fifth inning. He faces eight men and still doesn't have the third out.
Five times with fear not Twins fans because the Octor is in. <laughs> A.J. Octor coming in, making his sixth appearance since being called up a September call-up. He worked here on Saturday, an inning and a third of shutout baseball, even though the Twins lost that ball game seven to three. Fifteen pitches, eight for strikes. Ninth man to bat this inning here at Hill will be the first guy Octor faces. Yeah, Octor made his major league debut uh, here against the White Sox. One shutout inning with his family here. Started the season in double A, moved up to triple A. Good year, both places most of the time spent in Rochester. 40 relief appearance, appearances in Rochester. Very good 2.17 ERA combined between double A and triple A. Hill with a single to center and a comebacker to Nolasco. Runner at first, two down. Ball one. The Chicago White Sox beat the Detroit Tigers two to nothing. Kansas City's leading Cleveland two to nothing in the eighth inning at Progressive Field. I believe that was uh, Bassett that started that. Ball Chris game. Bassett shut yep. them down. Third time in September that the Tigers have been shut out. At the knees, a strike one and one. I believe too. Do they not have Chris Sale to face yet? I believe. Uh, not tomorrow, but in the finale. Scott Carroll's supposed to go tomorrow. Okay. Swing and a miss, one and two. The Octor has shown a good curveball. Fastball not overpowering, but that's the last pitch is that breaking ball, along with a changeup. 26 years old, signed by the Twins in 2010 out of Michigan State. Get the final out here in the top of the fifth. Santana fires a knee high rocket to Dozier or to uh, Bernie rather that ends the fifth inning. Five runs for the D backs. She has her stocking cap on. Oh, she's beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> Family, maybe father, son. Join the game. See if the twins get back into this. Now four runs. Call mentor with 66 pitches thrown to start. The fifth inning Hicks, Bernier, and Santana will face him. Ball one. He's only allowed two hits, both of them in the third inning. Big hit of that inning was Chris Herman's uh, RBI single.
strike called one and one. Hicks drew a walk in the third inning, sandwiched by the two hits, and the Twins got a run. Outside, two and one. Sharply up the middle and past Gregorius. Hicks with a line drive single. A good start to the bottom of the fifth. They showed very quick wrist right there. Waited back nicely, lined it up the middle, and that's what we've seen. Most of the hits that Aaron Hicks has gotten since his return have been right back up the middle. Here's Bernier. Strike one on the outside corner. Bernier with runners at first and second, nobody out in the third. Was asked to bunt, and he didn't get the bunt down and ended up striking out on a 3 2 pitch. One and one. Now, I may have misspoke. He may not have been asked to bunt because the Twins. Uh, will indicate look you get the guys over however you want to do it if you can do it uh, swinging away a little bit a different situation with a force play in effect but there goes Hicks on his way to second base and he's in with a stolen base so Hicks swiping second on ball two to Doug Bernier Hicks utilizing his speed to steal his fifth base of the year in seven attempts a head first slide To have him take a look at it. Running right by the mound, he will, he's headed for the second base umpire, John Byrne. John Byrne, a call up umpire, and they're going to review it. Looks like he's out before his hand touches the bag. Maybe this angle will show when the helmet's tagged right away. He's out. Yeah, Owens put the uh, tag on him and dropped that glove straight down. Right there before his hand got to the bag. So it should be a caught stealing for Hicks. Before Hicks got his pretty quick hand on the bag. Calls him out. So Hicks is called out. So the play goes caught stealing two to four. Right there is when the glove touches the helmet, and Hicks's left hand is inches away from the bag. So the appeal works for Gibson. And the count two and one to Bernier. Two and two. And that appeal play took a, a minute. That's it. Mm -hmm. Inside now another three two to Bernier. It's 
Laird to right. And that'll drop for a hit. Kicked forward to Owings, and Bernier has a base hit. We'll bring up Danny Santana. And Doug Bernier picking up his second hit in seven at bats. Sanford Health Injury Report Anibal Sanchez through a simulated game on Sunday. He'll be activated and will pitch out of the bullpen. They can't stretch him out far enough now because of how much time he was uh, put on uh, the disabled list to get him back uh, capable of pitching five innings. Tigers losing. Kyle Lobstein taking the loss, even though he pitched well against the White Sox. Ball one. Well, the Kansas City second game, or the real game, before the uh, delayed game was resumed, the Royals up two to nothing, bottom of the eighth inning. Two and oh. it's a peculiar situation. The game started in Kansas City weeks ago, finished tonight with Kansas City, the home team in Cleveland. The losing pitcher in that game, Derek Holland, who gave up the two runs, or Greg Holland rather, who gave up the two runs in Kansas City weeks ago. And now he'll in all likelihood, if the score doesn't change, he'll be asked to pick up a save in game two. Even though he didn't throw a pitch in game one. <laughs> and there it is, bottom of the eighth. Two and one to Santana. Ones who started the fifth inning with a pair of hits from the bottom of the order. That's how the Diamondbacks got their inning going. But Hicks was thrown out trying to steal. Foul back. And out of the ninth they go at progressive field, still 2 0 Kansas City. Mariners getting uh, thumped. By the Blue Jays and bad news for the Mariners in the pitching front too. Rowenas Elias has been shut down for at least a month with an elbow issue. Chris Young has been pulled from the rotation because they say he's out of gas. Not a the best time to lose two guys in your rotation. Santana on a half swing strikes out. Two down. Paul Mentor picks up his fifth strikeout, getting Santana for the second time. Well, he went up and in with that fastball. I think uh, Andy Santana wanted to hold up and went too far. Strikeouts have mounted in this home stand for Santana. A couple of them already tonight. Here's Herman. And swings and misses. Herman with a two out RBI single in the third. Twins had a 1 0 lead till this fifth inning began. Diamondback scored five, knocked out Ricky Nolasco. Foul back. Nine hits for the D backs, four for the Twins. Four twins hits have been singles. Very high, one and two. Fifth pitch from Colmenter coming. Fouled away by Herman. Colmenter making his 62nd major league start. He has 30 major league wins, 26 losses. Very good earned run average of 3.46. His 140th game overall. Came up in 2011, kind of a spot starter, and kind of went that way through 2012 too. Then last year, out of the bullpen. This year started in the bullpen, and because of the injuries we showed you earlier, now he's in a rotation. Tap to the right side, weak lead to Owings. A very good changeup. 
And he's given up just one run to the Twins through five. Started the five run mess in the fifth. Jake Lamb will lead things off in the sixth. Yeah, nine men will sent to the plate in the fifth inning when they opened up this ball game with a five to one lead. Yeah, Lamb got a fastball right there from Alaska. We got that base into right field. One of the best mascots in all of baseball right there, TC. He does a great job. Or whether the I could have been a mascot. Yeah. Yeah. I would have had fun. Some would say that you were a mascot and you did have fun. <laughs> yes, I did have fun. <laughs> and another single for Lamb, grounding one up the middle against Octor. And that'll bring up Owings. Tonight's look at the AT&T fan photo of the game. You can tweet your photo to hashtag North Fan Photo. Chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. There's TC. Gets around. Standing not next to Tommy John, but to Taylor John. Chris Owings, the batter. Or John Taylor. Strike on the outside corner. Owings struck out in the second against Nolasco, then got a single and later scored in the fifth. Foul back. You know, we're kind of looking forward to uh, Tony La Russa making this trip. Mm -hmm. But he has other things on his mind, does he not? Looking for a new uh, GM, new general manager. LaRusso is with the team in Denver and is not here in Minnesota, at least not yet. I know we talked a little bit about it. it looks like Dave Stewart might be in the uh, forefront, being the new general manager. Strikeout of Owings, one away. Well, Octor pitch, picking up his first strikeout. GM opening in Atlanta after today. Frank Rand dismissed. Good heartbreaking ball. Owen oh, striking out for the second time. D.D. Gregorius lined to Arcia in the third, then to hook the double into the right field corner, driving in a run in the fifth. Outside, ball one. Braves a very disappointing season this year. They. Started out great. Now they're below 500 and taking on water. 
Yeah, they lost to the Pirates tonight, one to nothing. That's the third game in a row that the Pirates have been involved in a one nothing game. And won two of them, right? right. One yesterday, one to nothing. Francisco Lariano started that ball game for the Pirates. Got the win. One and one to Gregorius. He's been pitching well as of late. Hook foul over the head of Dave McKay. Tony LaRusso named the new director of baseball operations or something like that. He is in charge of everything baseball for a baseball team. Chief Baseball Officer. Chief Baseball Officer. And the guy in the red shirt's already gotten one, so the ball by the ball. Had, the son had three of them. <laughs> Runner goes. Suzuki's throw. Tag dropped by Santana. They'll call him out. And no dispute from the runner, Jake Lamb. Nice tag. On a high throw, the tag made by Santana. Well, we saw Owens tag out uh, Hicks earlier with a quick tag down on the helmet right here Santana getting it and then a quick tag that's what you want to do as a middle infielder they say drop the glove straight down exactly what Santana did I think he got the uh, thigh area of Owens excuse me lamb before he could fly the get to the bag two and two to Gregorius that's hit down the line and deep to the corner. And Arcia plays the carom. Gregorius has another double. Hey, what? I, you know, I haven't seen Gregorius. He, he didn't want to play with us for the uh, Dutch team, or he couldn't. But, you know, he's got quick wrists. Why couldn't he play for the Dutch team? Uh, just uh, some personal reasons. Oh, okay. Well, none of my business. I thought maybe he wasn't Dutch. Boy, he was born in Amsterdam. <laughs> yes, he was. He reaches out right there, hits that ball high off the wall, and shows off his speed. Makes it easily to second base. And now Ender Inciarte. One and zero. Ciarte with a couple of singles drove in a run with a ground ball in the fifth. Oh, ben away 2 and 0. Oh. You know the team I would not want to be playing right now in the American League, the Texas Rangers. They're winning again tonight. And uh, Oakland has to go to Texas to close out the season, I believe. The ball dribbled up the line, foul. Right now, Texas is uh, hosting Houston. Yeah, they've won eight of their last ten ball games. Like you said, they're ahead of the Astros tonight, four to three. It's going to be interesting. See they're if Oakland can hold on. Mm -hmm. Kansas City, it was Cleveland have a chance. They have to, they almost have to sweep that series in Cleveland. It doesn't look good in the in the game today. Two outs left. It's uh, there's one out tonight. Kansas City leading two to nothing. A scoreless six for Oakland.
Sympathy is presented by Toyota. The annual clearance event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by McDonald's. Your McDonald's has five extra value meals under $5, including the sausage McMuffin with egg at participating locations. Diamondbacks leading the Twins 5-1 as the Twins come to the plate here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Twins have been out hit 11-4. Josh Colmenter with his unique over-the-top delivery. Held the Twins to just four singles so far. Ploof has struck out twice tonight. And there have been a lot of swings like that. I tell you what, Ploof was sitting on that cur uh, that changeup in his last at bat, and Colmenter just stuck those fastballs right by him and struck him out. And so this time he starts him with a changeup. Another one. Shaves the outside corner with it. 0 and 2. Yeah, straight over the top. They say hitters have a tough time picking it up because it it almost comes right over his hat. Big guy, 6'4, about 235. Missing the outside corner there. We always talk about creating angles and from his position of where that ball is released. He definitely has a great downward plane. Now inside two and two. Blue Vargas and Arcia the three four and five batters trying to make a little noise here in the bottom of the sixth. Toward the hole second hop picked off by the lamb. Blue retired one away and the Royals have beaten the Indians two to nothing. And with Detroit's loss. The Royals are now just one game out of first. In the American League Central, and Cleveland uh, has fallen back now. That's really a costly yeah. loss for them. We talked about it when they were here. They really don't have any margin for error. No, they don't. They have two more games against Kansas City that are must wins. Here's Vargas. Terry Francona came to the ballpark today and. Somebody asked him about how he feels about his team re-entering the playoff hunt, and he said, "You know, I woke up this morning and I was nervous." Here's a high drive to right center field. Pollock is there. Francona said he woke up today and he was nervous, but he'd rather be nervous than packing. <laughs> Two down in the sixth. Here is Arce. Three pitches for Callmenter. No activity in the Arizona bullpen. Down and away, ball one. Two and oh. Momenter coming in at a ball game his last five starts two and one an ERA at 1.01 all five starts quality starts in those five starts he worked 35 and two thirds innings gave up only 21 hits only four earned runs I think Kurt Gibson probably wondering too what taunt Tony LaRusse is going to do as far as his job. If there are a lot of people, the only guy I would think would be safe would be Dave McKay. He's a coach with the Diamondbacks, and he was one of uh, LaRusse's coaches all those years with Oakland and St. Louis. Marcia grounds one to the right side. Too many guys over there, including Owings, who throws him out. A 1 2 3 6, and it's still 5 to 1.
striking first. Yes, yeah, Chris Herman with an RBI single. That scored Chris Parmley in the third inning. But in, it was a five run fifth inning off of Ricky Nolasco that chased him. Gregorius with the double that scored a run. And four hitters later, it was Mark Trumbo with his 12th home run of the year. A two run home run. Good job by A.J. Ochter, by ending in a third of shutout baseball. Now Lester Oliveras coming in, making his fifth relief appearance since being recalled from Rochester. He worked on Saturday, an inning and a third of shutout baseball, had one walk, no strikeouts. His first two outings, he gave up five runs and two thirds of an inning, but uh, his last two appearances have been better. Oliveras will face Pollock, Peralta, and Trumbo here in the seventh inning. First pitch driven foul down the right side. Oliveras fastball slider changeup. Coming off that Tommy John surgery he had in August of 2012. Usually takes a year, year and a half to come back from that. One and one. Some guys a little longer. You just don't know. Everybody's different. You know, Mike Pelfrey tried to come back a little bit, maybe too quick. Driven to the gap in right center. Arcia to the gap, running, and the ball off his glove. Hicks picks it up, and it'll be Pollock standing at second base. Garcia got there and hit the glove and didn't stay in it. Yeah, he went a long way for this ball, and it looked like from our angle he was going to catch up to it. And it looked like he did, but maybe off the tip of the glove. Get a chance to see it again. Fastball, not a lot of movement from Oliveras, and Pollock taking it the other way. And he almost leaped too soon. Off the top of the glove. Be a double for Pollock, his third hit of the ball game on his 19th double. Here's Peralta, fouling it back. I think that's one thing in spring training that uh, Arcia will get a lot of, and that's outfield hit balls hit to him. We have seen out there that uh, he's a. Uh, not been the uh, the best as far as catching up to that ball and actually catching it. Santana throws out Peralta Pollock to third. Now's the time to renew your season tickets or become a new member of the season ticket family for next year. Along with the usual matchups against the division rivals, the Twins host National League favorites Milwaukee, the Cubs, the Cardinals, all here at Target Field. You can call 833 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com. Find out more about the 2015 schedule. Mark Trombo up with the infield in. Good fastball there at 95. Yeah, I've said it before. You know, when Tony Oliva first joined the club at 64, I believe it was, he wasn't the best outfielder, but he worked his tail off and became a gold glove winner. Two strikes to Trombo. Just the way we've seen RC play. You know how the good outfielders they're running hard but their head doesn't move the ball doesn't bounce around on them but it almost looks like just the opposite happens with RC. Earl Oliveira's got to be a fastball again and Trombo guessing fastball and swung wildly at a pitch over his shoulders. So a big strikeout right there for Oliveras. Two down. He stayed with the heater on three pitches. Trumbull gearing up for that fastball and only missed it by three feet. Tracks presented by Dodge. Two down, and here's Montero. Down and in a ball. Montero with a strikeout, a ground out, and a walk. Bat. 
Sanchez over the Twins dugout. Ahead of Paul Molitor into the second row of seats. Looking, it looks like everybody's okay. Somebody has a souvenir. And the usher right there asking, does he want the bat back? Don't care, didn't care one way or the other. Just went to the on deck circle and got another one. Gonna miss one and two. Another good fastball at 96. That's what the Twins have seen in the minor leagues, and they want to get a better look at it up here. Whether he can command that fastball. Probably not going to get Montero to chase one up in his eyes like Trumbo did. Tried. He tried it. Why not? <laughs> two and two. Fastball. 96 down and in. Full count with a runner at third. And two away. And Oliveris. Seems to have tabled the slider. He's just going after these Diamondback hitters with a 95 96 mile per hour fastball. He has a tight slider that if you can keep it down, Montero might swing through it. He's kind of geared up for that fastball now. And he misses it. 95 on the outside corner and Holland left at third base. Right of telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. Kurt Suzuki will lead things off for the Twins in the seventh. Cole Mentor out there. He has thrown 98 pitches, 60 for strikes. Well, I saw him in the dugout laughing and, and uh, enjoying himself, and I thought maybe he'd been taken out of the game. It's a 5 1 ball game, and it'll be Suzuki, Parmalee, and Hicks in the seventh. Suzuki 0 for 2, a couple of fly balls to center. 
Kohlminter coming off a start against the Giants in Arizona. He lost a heartbreaker, a two to one ball game. He worked eight innings, only gave up a couple runs. Strike one to Suzuki. He's been good his last five starts, an ERA of just over one. Have gotten just the one run so far. One and one. Two and one. That might be the first curveball I saw him throw. Everything basically been fastball changeup. Opponents coming in off of a home enter. They're hitting 252. Right handers hitting only 213 off of it. Left handers 291. So he's been very tough on right handed hitters. Mainly because of that great changeup. He's shown very good control, only one walk. Suzuki takes ball three. Normally on deck. Base hit for the Twins. It stays in the corner, and Suzuki stands at second base. Well, they got the count to three and two, and with a four-run lead, I'm sure Kurt looking fastball. He got it and lined it into a left field corner. 34th double of the year for Suzuki. Very quick right here inside. Opened up quickly and lined it into the corner. His first year as pitching coach for the Diamondbacks, the last seven years, he was the bullpen pitching coach for the New York Yankees. Imagine the stories that he could tell <laughs> about one guy mainly, Mariano Rivera. I don't think he has any stories about Phil Hughes. He might. Here's Parmley. Good start to the inning. Now the Twins need to. Have the type of inning that the Diamondbacks had in the fifth when they sent nine men to the plate and scored five times. Normally with a single and a run scored. He got the first hit for the Twins in the third inning. A base hit that they broke his bat on. But it died into right field. Strike on the outside corner. Not his bat, the ball. And low one and one. 106 pitches now. Most he has thrown in a ball game. 109. That coming against the Giants back on June 20th. Yep, foul. One and two to Parmalee. Down by four. To see Parmalee drive a run in here. Checked his swing. Two and two. Center. 
sending the center fielder Pollock back. Suzuki will tag from second and move up a base. One away, and that'll bring up Aaron Hicks. Let's see. We'll have a pitching change here, but our carsoup.com trivia question Bob Brentley's one. I think Bob Melvin's another. Gibson and Buck Showalter. Arizona came into play uh, in the National League back in 1998. Home mentor taking out a runner at third, one down, and a pitching change here in the seventh. Trusts a four run lead to the bullpen. That'll be all Perez coming out of the bullpen. He last worked in Colorado and he had an inning that uh, has only been done 44 other times. He struck out four in one inning. The only twin to ever do that, Scott Baker did it back in uh, 2008 against the Milwaukee Brewers in Milwaukee. And I believe this to be true. The only guy who's done it twice was Chuck Finley. Yeah. I saw one of them. Yeah. He was a teammate of Chuck in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, he had that nasty split finger. Aaron Hicks will hit from his preferred side. He's walked and singled and was thrown out trying to steal in fifth. Yeah, Oliver Perez, 33 years old, first came to the big leagues with the Padres back in 2002. This is his first season with the Diamondbacks. Last couple years with Seattle Mariners. Playing with a four run lead, the Diamondbacks will concede a run on a ground ball here. Hicks at the plate, hoping to do something more than that. Outside, ball one. Like Hicks is hitting 320 from the right side of the plate, but Diamondbacks make a pitching change and allow Hicks to hit from his preferred side. He's hitting 240 as a right handed hitter. Side 2 0. Oh. Perez that gives you that sidearm type of delivery. Almost like TJ House that uh, we saw here with the Cleveland Indians. Two and out. Three and O. Oh, Bernier on deck. Perez with 21 walks in 57 and two thirds innings, two intentional, but 74 strikeouts. It should be taken here, and he takes ball. Oh, I beg your pardon. Three and one. Toronto finished off the Mariners 
14 to 4. Costly loss for Seattle. 3 and 1 now to Aaron Hicks. And Hicks fouls it away. Perez almost did the uh, Louis T on time. Yeah, left handed up. version of that, yeah. yeah. Turns his, it's almost reader, or the hitter can almost see his number. Three and two. A quicker delivery to the plate and a foul ball. Let's go. I believe this is a couple pitches ago where it kind of spins almost all the way around. This is the last one where it kind of didn't do it like he had done on the previous pitch. Sometimes he'll spin all the way around. There it is. And a check swing ball four. So a walk to Hicks. He's reached all three times. And Bernier's been called back. Was Neil Pinto will hit for him. Now on FoxSportsNorth.com, Danny Santana's had one of the more impressive rookie seasons for the Twins in recent memory. Tyler Mason. Examines how it stacks up to other rookie years and how it compares to other American League rookies. In another year, Santana might be considered a candidate to win the Rookie of the Year award, but not with Jose Abreu doing what he has done. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Well, the Twins a big fly away from jumping right back into the ball game here, and so they put Pinto up there to try to do that. Bernier had gone one for two. Pinto 0 for 8 is a pinch hitter, but he does have that home run power. Inside, ball one. And as these games are played out in this series with an eye towards 2015. This is an important at bat. The Twins want to see whether Pinto can develop the ability to deliver off the bench. Chop to the right side and over the head of the first baseman, Trumbo. Suzuki scores, Hicks to third. And not a three run home run, but a barreled up grounder that chopped over the head of the first baseman. Yeah, Pinto gets an RBI, his 17th of the year. And with Trumbo holding on the runner, Hicks at first base. Trumbo, of course, you kind of jump out a little bit that this ball hit right in front of home plate hard. As you can see, over the head of Trumbo. And a speedy Hicks scoots over to third. And now Danny Santana. And another trip to the mound by Mike Harkey. Twins have rolled the lineup over Suzuki, Hicks, and Pinto have all reached. Now the top of the order, Santana. Herman would hit next. Twins, of course, have plenty of options on their bench. Pinto lifted for a pinch runner. It's Escobar. Escobar's first action. Good to see him back. Since uh, spraining his shoulder. Just no diving. <laughs> Santana, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. And somewhere in the message brought to the mound by Mike Harkey might have been the message breaking balls down and in. There's a fastball that cut yep. the plate in half. And those are the pitches I think that Danny needs to really jump on early because if he does fall behind. I think the book is getting out there on that breaking ball. He and uh, Danny, oh, excuse me, uh, Kenny Vargas. Montero sitting inside. It's hit to the right field corner, but in the seats, 0 2. 
Now two fastballs right there. So let's see if uh, Diamondbacks get that scouting report. Struck out two or three times against T.J. House, a left-hander, with that hard breaking ball down and in. Two strikes to Santana with one out. Up and away, another fastball. Santana hitting 288 as a right handed hitter. Two of his seven home runs from the right side of the plate. One and two. There it was. There's that pitch. Foul tip, and they say Montero dug it out of the dirt for strike three. Or dug it, caught the foul tip before it hit the dirt. He tried to fastball up when they had an account, but then he went to that breaking ball down and in, and that's the pitch we've seen Santana have trouble with. Nunez will hit for Herman. It's almost a pitch, I guess you look at it, it would be a ball, but it's, you know, we've seen Santana so aggressive, and he just swings right through it. Twins have gotten one pinch hit this inning, looking for another one now. Nunez has had a tough goal lately. Now Nunez has been announced, and that'll force the hand of Kirk Gibson, who will make a pitching change. He'll bring in a right-hander, and whether the Twins counter with another pinch hitter remains to be seen. We will take a break in a 5-2 game. Going to circle her right there. You are her by here by circle, young lady. There you go. Evan Marshall comes out of the Diamondback bullpen to pitch to the Twins with the lead on the line in the seventh. Yeah, Marshall in his rookie season, 24 years old, from Kansas State, signed by the Diamondbacks in 2011. Pretty solid year out there. 54th relief for Paris. 45 innings pitched, just 15 walks, two intentional, with 51 strikeouts. He's got a report on Marshall. Good moving fastball, hard breaking ball, and a changeup. Nunez will hit. And Nunez hitting for Herman, who went one for three with an RBI single. Inside, ball one. Nunez just under 200 at bats this year, 197. Four homers, four triples, six doubles. That's what the Twins are hoping for here an extra base hit. That'll get them uh, to within a run. Two for 10 as a pinch hitter. On the ground instead. And a 
Bryant skips to Gregorius, and that ends the inning. One for the Twins. They leave two. It's five to two. studio join us on twins live pregame tomorrow night for a look at one of the most decorated athletes we've had in minnesota chrissy wendell who led the gophers to two national titles and was the fifth girl to play in the little league world series back in 1994 that's on twins live pregame tomorrow night now back to target field that's a good feeling here, 5 2, the Diamondbacks in front, and we go to the eighth inning. The Twins go one man deeper into their bullpen. Michael Duncan coming out of the ballgame, making his 24th appearance, his ninth appearance since being a September call up. Duncan's numbers. Referenced it before, Ron Gartenheiter saying with the media today, the one thing they have to keep reminding Tonga to kind of do what. Paul Mentor does not maybe not to that extreme but to bring his arm up and deliver over the top and use his height to his advantage they're all six foot seven of it it improves not only his fastball the angle of it there's Escobar in the game he's at second base and Nunez is in left field but in staying over the top it gets his breaking ball to change levels or or tiers, it has uh, the easiest thing to do. He's very quick home, so those hips fly open, and it's tough to get your arm up on top. So, almost what you have to tell him to do is show a little more pocket, like that right there. Just stay over that pitching rubber a little bit longer, and allows that arm to catch up where you can create that downward plane. If you fly open very quickly, your arm drags and it's hard to get that arm up on top. Then the breaking pitch stays in the same plane. Right. You can see back to back 96 mile per hour fastballs. There's plenty of arm speed and strength there. But both pitches are about belt high. If he can get that angle to work to go down where the hitter only sees the top half of that ball, that'll make him even nastier. Breaking ball hit down the line into the corner. And he'll digging for second. Nunez's throw. Not in time. It's a lead-off double. Great example of not of getting underneath the baseball. This slider right here. The veteran Hill did not miss it because of the state on the same plane. And that's what you're talking about, Dick. Watch this. It just spun right there. There's no downward break. He's a short armor anyway, so it surely shouldn't be hard to get that arm over his head a little bit more. And Jake Lamb, the Twins have just gotten a run back to get within three. Three typically considered to be striking distance. Swing and a miss with a 95 mile per hour fastball. 
And what he'll do is if he gets that ball down in the strike zone, he'll get more ground ball outs because of the little sink that he might be able to generate. All back to even that pitch about letter high. I think sometimes when guys are young, 24 years old, and I kind of went through that, you think you can throw the ball through a brick wall. And then the hitters realize they'll teach you that before the ball hits the brick wall, they have a bat and they'll meet it. And they'll hit it hard. See the life on that fastball. It was not headed for the strike zone, but then it tailed up and away from the batter. A lot of movement at 96. Oh, he has a great arm. Just can he control that fastball down? Everything's been about thigh high up. Another pitch up to the left. Playable for Nunez. He'll made set up for a tag and he'll just bluff. Good throw by Nunez. One down. Let's check in with Marty Gellner. Dick and Bird just before the game, Ron Gardenhire was talking about what you guys were just talking about, Michael Tomkin and that arm angle. And Gardy said, we want him to keep it high because he is such a big and tall player, and we want him to use that to his advantage. And then at time, his arm, his wrist, the angle, everything dips off to the side more as opposed to coming up over the top. And Gardy said, we have to teach him to learn that mechanics a little bit better, to repeat it, and to keep it consistent. And I think that's sometimes the hardest thing when you have a young man like Tunkins that's trying to impress somebody. So you go out there and you try a little bit too hard, and that, again, that, that's kind of a, you know, cliche, but you have to try to find a way to stay back and create that angle. Right there. If he can throw 95 and hit that spot on a repeated basis. Hardest pitch to hit in baseball. Now, he won't see Rochester, New York ever again. Two strikes. Oh, what a jump Hill had. A stolen base. With Tonka just giving him a cursory glance and Hill stole third. Yeah, the veteran Aaron Hill noticed that Michael Tonka was just kind of staring at him and there he goes. Suzuki, good throw, but he'll in at third. Well, the Twins have to bring the infield in. It's one and two to the batter, Chris Owings. Third stolen base for the Diamondbacks tonight. And they've been caught once. High chopper. Santana thought about it. And Hill tumbles across home plate. They have hurt himself. Hill holding his right arm along his side. Almost looked like he tripped over the bat, but I don't think he did. I think he just kind of awkwardly rolled over the plate. He's giving the high five with the left hand and walking right into the trainer's room. Or the clubhouse. Let's take a look right here. Hill going in head first. Oh boy. That's like a shoulder yeah. issue. Might have jammed that wrist. You see him holding the wrist. 6 2 the ball game out now with uh, Gregorius at the plate. The run, of course, charged to Tonkin. 1 0. Yeah, the stolen base by Hill gets another run for the D backs. That's the thing. We saw Jordan Schaefer do that in Chicago. You're at second base with nobody out. The hitter does not do his job, but you have the ability. To steal the base that you didn't get with the first out of the inning. And that led to an important insurance run for the Twins. And similarly, here in the eighth inning, Diamondbacks get a sixth run because of the steal of third base. Those are the little things that managers like to see. Gregorius, a couple hits, a couple doubles with an RBI, and he has scored a run. Trammell did that a few times in his day. Didn't pay attention to him. He'd steal a base. Up and away, two and two. In the seventh inning, the Diamondbacks got a leadoff double but didn't score. Here in the eighth, they have scored after a leadoff two bagger. Over 
over the head of Plouffe and it lands safely down the line. And Gregorius has had himself quite a ball game with three doubles in succession. He came into this ball game with only six doubles on the year for the Diamondbacks and he picks up another three here tonight. The most popular way to follow September pennant races is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, replay reviews, scores, stats, live radio broadcasts, and the MLB.tv game of the day and more. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store or visit MLB.com. What we haven't seen Tonkin do is try to throw that ball right on top of home plate. Try to throw it down. Everything has been belt high. One and oh. And into the right handed batter's box with ball two. Oakland A's got six runs in the first against C.J. Wilson, who couldn't seemingly throw the ball over the plate. Here's Suzuki offering some encouragement to Tonkin, or maybe with the mask on, just the opposite. A <laughs> bit of a tongue lashing. I don't know which. Two and zero. Oh. Duncan trying to get out of the inning here. He's given up a couple of doubles and a run. Popped up. Short left. Nunez coming in. And that takes care of it. A couple of doubles, another run for the Diamondbacks at 6 to 2. Of the eighth inning. Be Trevor Ploof hitting against Evan Marshall. Farmland wants cooking around the majors tonight. Jose Bautista with 35 in the home run department. A costly loss for the Mariners who have all kinds of pitching issues now. Andrew McCutcheon. The only run of a one nothing game. Frank Rand, the general manager of the Braves, relieved of his GM duties today. Of course, uh, the one uh, link to Frank Rand's uh, tenure, actually a couple of them. The Twins traded Ryan Domit there, and Domit has just not responded well at all to return to the National League. And then the Twins got Jordan Schaefer from the Braves. 
on waivers. And Schaefer's proven to be a pretty valuable fourth outfield candidate for next year. He gets the play here. He did not get the play a lot in Atlanta. And that was one of the issues with Frank Wren signing of B.J. Upton and the insistence that Upton be in the lineup cost Schaefer playing time. And uh, that's one thing if Upton was hitting or found a way to start hitting and that never really did happen. So two uh, careers were impacted by the decision to play Upton. Upton didn't really respond well to his first year with or second year with the Braves. And then Schaefer was deemed expendable. Because he wasn't playing and when he did he didn't hit hard to. Do this under the best of circumstances but getting 80 at bats in four months is kind of tough. Two and two to Ploof. Tapped foul. Math doesn't really add up to well for Schaefer. 63 games and 80, 80 at bats. <laughs> well, you you know he can play defense, and that's basically right. probably or how pinch he run. Used. You right. know, stay in a game and play defense. Maybe get one at bat. Two and two to Plouffe, trying to get something started here in the eighth inning. On deck. The big uh, news on the field today. Kansas City lost the completion of the suspended game, but shut out the Indians 2-0 in the nightcap. The Tigers were shut out by the White Sox 2-0. The Mariners were beaten up by the Blue Jays 14-4. And there's Plouffe drawing a leadoff walk in the eighth. So the American League Central, the tightest divisional race in baseball anyway, just got a little tighter with Kansas City in essence splitting a doubleheader, so they pick up a half game on Detroit. They're just a game out, and they are in the driver's seat in the wild card race with Seattle, who also lost. Here is Vargas. There was a chance that by the time the Twins got to Detroit, things would be pretty much over and done with if Detroit had continued to play well in the Chicago series and the Royals struggled. The division race could have been over with from Detroit's standpoint. Now, Kansas City and Cleveland might have been slugging it out for a wild card spot, but that wouldn't have impacted the Twin series there. Vargas fouls it back. Well, I don't have the uh, the line score on that Kansas City game, but uh, that's a big out. I see Danny Duffy got the win, and that's important for the Royals. Six shutout innings when they thought at one point the season might be over with. Right. So now it's a game, and there's only two games left in uh, Cleveland and uh, in Detroit against the White Sox, and then the Twins come to town. So. Almost certainly now, most of the games that the Twins play in Detroit will have a great deal of impact in the American League Central. Not the way you want to play those games as a last place team, but. Hey, we are where you are, but you can be a spoiler. Right. I know you, you don't like that word, you know, when you've had the year. There's that breaking ball again to Vargas that has given him problems. And Marshall picks up a strikeout. Fox Sports Supports is proud to collaborate with Stand Up to Cancer, a groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Well, it'll be interesting because Comerica Park will be packed for all four games. And there will be an intensity in that ballpark 
that regardless of whether the Twins win no games there, all four games, anything in between, it will be good for the Arceus, Santanas, Vargas's of the world because it will be a playoff atmosphere. It's just the Twins will be playing those games in a playoff atmosphere in absentia. They won't be a part of it. One strike to Arcia. So imagine Arcia in a potential clinching situation with the tying run at second, Nathan on the mound, and everybody in and out of Comerica Park going nuts. That's what baseball is all about, and I hope it happens. One and one to Arcia. Line foul. You know you have you know you have the Angels in the American League. You have Baltimore. They're just trying to set themselves up for their first game in postseason. Then you have other clubs that are fighting it out. Think, uh, Bud Selig, when he put in that second wild card, brought a lot of excitement into the finishing touches of a baseball season. One and two. He takes up high. One of the residual effects of the second wild card is it plays so much more importance on winning the division now because you play a wild card game. Somebody's going home after one game when the two teams play each other. Two and two to Arcia. Don't you think those two years in a row that the Twins played 163 that that kind of maybe set the stage for you know Major League Baseball to talk about one more club being added so that could happen? Wasn't just that uh, you know the Twins were involved in those games, the type of games that they were, both right. decided by one run. You know, winner advances, loser goes home, and well, you didn't have to be a marketing genius from baseball to go, hey, let's do this every year. Off speed pitch and RC gets a piece of that. Well, people that will tell you that in 2009, game 163, it was officially a regular season game, but it was the most exciting postseason game it wasn't a postseason game but it was more exciting than anything that followed that year bouncer towards the middle and it will be a chance for a double play Arcia will beat it out it was the third baseman lamb I believe right. feeding Gregorius so a five six force out at second base Well, that shift you see Gregorius, the shortstop, staying where he's normally at. And Lamb gets his ground ball, gets the force out, but Arcia beats it out to stay out of the double play. Suzuki will bat with a runner at first and two down. For time. Suzuki doubled and scored in the seventh inning. And a strike on the outside corner. Suzuki's Average at 292, and it's going to take a pretty good week to get him back to 300. But that he is hit as high as he has is really remarkable. Just think of this game. It was a throw to second base, and Suzuki in his follow through hit either the bat of the batter or his back or both. And you could see Suzuki trying to get the sting out of his fingers. And then an inning or so later, he drives a double into the left field corner. Hit the bat of Peralta and then uh, 
Pollock ended up stealing the bag, but then the two run home run by Trumbull. Two strikes to Suzuki. Chopper to short. Gregorius charges, flips, and that retires the Twins in the eighth inning. Twins here in the top of the ninth inning. Coming up after the game on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. We'll take a look at Arizona's bats and how they've come to life tonight, and in particular in that fifth inning when the Diamondbacks batted around and scored five. That was the big difference maker tonight. That inning was. We'll also take a look at Josh Kalmenter and his six and a third innings and how he stays hot coming into this game. Kalmenter's last five starts, he'd posted a 1.01 ERA. We'll also hear, hear from. Ron Gardenhire. So Dick and Bert, it'll be Tom Kelly and Tom Hanneman on Twins Live tonight. All right. Worth listening to. Fox Tracks presented by Carrier with Ryan Presley into the game to pitch to the Diamondbacks on the ninth. Yeah, Ryan making his 23rd relief appearance, 25 and a third innings, only eight walks, two intentional with 14 strikeouts. He worked a third of an inning in yesterday's game. Through only two pitches. One hop skipper to Escobar over to Parmalee one away. It's the first time I think we've seen Escobar throw the ball. Remember he jammed that right shoulder. And Ron Gardenhire admitted he initially thought Escobar's season was done. I think only a middle infielder can fully sympathize or empathize with. The play that Escobar made and the apparent injury when you jam your elbow into the dirt and it jars your shoulder and Gardy thought the worst and thankfully Escobar is able to come back and play. Wants to play winter ball. And there's growing sentiment I think that he will come to spring training next year. There's a ball line to Escobar two down. If he survives this game. <laughs> He'll come to camp next year as the incumbent starting shortstop for the Minnesota Twins. Two down. And that leaves uh, the question what then of Danny Santana. Well I don't know that the Twins have resolved center field. Yet. Two down here's Trumbo. Another one hit to deep right center field. Hicks back at the wall, makes the catch. Very well played by Aaron Hicks. Timed his lead perfectly, and Presley gets off the mound in a hurry.
cost them a ball game against Arizona. Ricky Nolasco knocked out of the ball game in the fifth. Five runs charged, and now Will Harris comes into the game for the Diamondbacks. Yeah, Harris in his second season with the Diamondbacks first came up with the Rockies in 2012. Selected off waivers from the Oakland A's by the D Bats. And Harris will face the scheduled batters, Parmalee Hicks and Escobar. There's plenty of help on the bench if the Twins feel like they need it, but they're going to maybe need a bat around inning here to tie this ball game up. Parmalee one for three, a single and a run scored. Twins have Parmalee a lefty, a couple of switch hitters, actually three in a row. The next right handed batter do often be Nunez. Ball uh, hooked foul into the seats. One strike to Parmalee. Yeah, scouting report on Will Harris, 30 years old, fastball, curveball, and a changeup. One strike. Didn't mean to, and that ball dribbled up the line. Foul. Still rolling, and it still potentially could have rolled fair. Gary Cedarstrom came out in front of home plate to make sure that ball didn't spin back into fair territory. Two strikes. Just off the outside corner, very close pitch, two and two. Addison Reed lightly warming up down in the Arizona bullpen. The event this spins a little bit out of control and turns into a save situation. And a breaking ball gets Parmley. There's that curveball right there, and Harris picks up a strikeout. Century link linked to what uh, what's next last night game of the home schedule tomorrow. Andrew Chafin will go for the Diamondbacks. Kyle Gibson hoping to finish his season on a high note. It'll be Gibson's next to last start. Gibson done tentatively scheduled to pitch the season finale game in Detroit. Right. And there might be everything in the world at stake for Detroit in that game or nothing at all. Strike one to Hicks. He's reached all three times a pair of walks in a single. Foul back. But Bob Brenly was going to get another chance at one there. Two strikes. Breaking ball in the dirt. Hicks lays off. That looks like a pretty good curveball. Almost a 12 to 6 type curveball from Harris. Had elbow surgery back in 2010. He is with the with the Rockies. Just off the outside corner, two and two. South number two. And Escobar will get a chance to swing the bat. 
16th game between these two ball clubs dating back to 2003. The Twins have the advantage 8 to 7 in defense. Escobar getting his first at bat. Like he never left. Slaps a single to center with two outs. That'll get Santana to the play. Yeah, the number nine position in the Twins lineup tonight. Three hits. Doug Bernier got a base hit. Pinto got an RBI single, and now Escobar gets a base hit. Middle of the lineup, Bluff, Vargas, Arcia didn't get anything done to speak of. Hit batter and a walk. Here's Santana, 0 for 4, with three more strikeouts. Outside, ball one. Joe Maurer in the on deck circle. He'll hit for Nunez if the game is extended. Foul back one and one. I would expect Maurer back in the lineup tomorrow. Dozier back in the lineup tomorrow. Twins one out away from falling to three and four on this homestand. Swing. I think he went. Yep. One and two. One and two. Foul. Escobar took off from first. He'll come back to first base. And the pitch rolled to second base. And the Diamondbacks have ended a 10 game road losing streak with a 6 2 win over the Twins here at Target Field. Tom Hanneman, not a good way for the Twins to get this series started. And unfortunately for their fans, another short start from Ricky Delasco. Dick, apparently the Diamondbacks felt right at home tonight in their first game ever at Target Field. They win it. 6-2 coming up next on Twins Live. We'll talk about the Diamondback ambush in the fifth inning. We'll hear from Guardian. Look ahead to game two.